Coming up on today's episode of Airborne, the AEA announces third quarter 2014 avionics market report, Fantasy of Flight hosts special private event, and a House committee hearing focuses on modernizing the nation's airspace system. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. The Aircraft Electronics Association has released its third quarter 2014 avionics market report. In the three month period of July through September 2014, total worldwide business and general aviation avionics sales amounted to more than $614 million. The figure represented a 5% decrease in sales compared to the third quarter 2013 amount of more than $646 million. The third quarter amount brings total worldwide sales for the first nine months of 2014 to more than $1.9 billion. Despite the third quarter indicating a slowdown in sales compared to the first and second quarters of 2014, this year's sales are up 2.7% compared to the first nine months of 2013. Paula Dirks, AEA's president, said in part, quote, While it is disappointing to see the third quarter sales drop slightly compared to the first half of the year, the industry has experienced modest year-over-year -year growth in sales compared to the first nine months of 2013, end quote. Fantasy of Flight in Polk City, Florida is going to make tomorrow a very special day for World War II veteran Barney Wasowicz. Wasowicz's B-26 was shot down over France. Piloting the crippled plane until his crew bailed out, he then hit the silk, was captured by the Germans, and became a prisoner of war for 15 months. At Fantasy of Flight, he will be given the opportunity to lay his eyes and hands on an intact B-26 Marauder, the same type of plane he bailed out of over 70 years ago. John Stonecipher, CEO of Guidance Aviation, along with Guidance Aviation personnel, will be taking the former World War II prisoner of war from Arizona to Florida in order for Wasowicz to be reunited with his beloved B-26 Marauder. Stonecipher added, quote, When we discovered that there was an intact B-26 at the Fantasy of Flight Museum, we decided it was a perfect way to say thank you to this veteran, end quote. We at ANN extend our appreciation to Mr. Wasowitz for his dedication and service to our country. After these messages, the U.S. House hears from aviation experts regarding airspace modernization. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Aero TV, our website or podcast, drop an email to jim at aero-news.net. The full Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure held a hearing on Tuesday of this week focused on preparing the next reauthorization of the FAA and modernization and operation of U.S. airspace. The hearing was titled FAA Reauthorization, Issues in Modernizing and Operating the Nation's Airspace. A number of aviation notables were invited to testify before the committee. One of these was Mark Baker, President and CEO of AOPA. In Baker's pre-hearing written testimony, he wrote, quote, The FAA must adapt its practices, policies, and procedures to match the reality of today's environment, end quote. Baker also wrote about FAA operational and airspace issues, including the 2020 requirement for ADSB, and he addressed the issue of the general aviation community waiting too long for medical reform. The current FAA law expires at the end of September of 2015. The committee continues to develop the next reauthorization of the agency and its programs. 
It's Friday at last, and that means it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. In light of the recent decisions concerning FAA versus Perker, Jim believes that the FAA has been given the power to strangle the UAV movement, and that's just what they seem to be doing. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. Well, the FAA v. Perker decision uh, got a little bit of news this week when basically the, the whole thing was sent back to the NTSB administrative law judge for him to research whether or not Mr. Perker operated his aircraft in a careless and reckless manner. Behind the scenes, what it basically means was that the original argument that the FAA really didn't have the wherewithal, the legal means, and the mandate to regulate or control model aircraft, well, that got thrown out the window. And as a result, the FAA, again, seems to be in a position to do whatever it darn well pleases. The problem is nobody knows what that is. We have been waiting for a cohesive, cogent, reasonable policy on UAVs for, well, years. While other nations and other governments have put them together, I mean, we border Canada, they've had a policy in various forms for over a decade. It's not perfect, but at least it's something. It's what people can count on, and well, it's a place to go from there and for them to learn on. To a certain extent, any regulations concerning UAVs at this point are going to be licenses to learn because nobody knows where this is going to go. Not even those with the wildest imaginations, and particularly science fiction writers, can truly conceive of what these devices are going to mean to us in the future. But this is what scares me. Yeah, there are some problems to be solved. Yeah, there are some dangers to be had. Yeah, there's no question there's going to be some real skirmishes in the future. But the FAA's way of dealing with anything is to overregulate, make it more expensive, make it more convoluted, and make it hard for anybody to engage in that activity. Look what they've done to general aviation. Look what they've done to flight training. Look what they've done to business aviation. Look what they've done to the airlines. And one of the things that really scares me is this. We have very good sources within the FAA. The little puzzle palace up in Washington, well, they think about this stuff all the time. And there is a certain working group out there that's looking at what they're going to do to regulate UAVs. Would you believe that there are people who are considering now how to N register, different kind of N number, Every single model aircraft, every UAV that flies, and of course, somebody's going to have to pay for that. And of course, it's going to be you and I. But worse than that, it's going to be, mean a whole new set of regulations and a whole new way to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I mean, can you imagine the FAA trying to control and register millions of these devices and what could come of that? The mind boggles, and more important, the industry shudders. Folks, it is time for a cohesive, smart policy. It's not going to come from the FAA. But I'll bet you dollars to donuts that the industry associations, organizations, and entities that are expert in this field could put together a very workable set of guidelines with the government in a way that will allow the industry to thrive, be safe, and make a great pathway toward the future. That would be the smart thing to do. Not necessarily what this government does, but we'll see. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. Rob Holland's first place finish at the national championship has earned him a spot on the United States Aerobatic Team for the 2015 World Aerobatic Championships in Chateauroux, France, to be held August 20th through the 29th. However, competing for the gold is a pricey venture. Each pilot on the 2015 team is self-funded meaning each competitor is responsible for the massive cost of shipping their aircraft across the world. And the high cost will be prohibitive for Rob without support. So Rob is asking for help to bring back the gold through donations. Supporters of Rob Holland and Team USA who make a donation of $25 or more will have their names placed on Rob's MXS RH aerobatic airplane. An extra perk for those who donate is they will be automatically entered to win the flight of a lifetime in a real World War II P-51D Mustang. After the break, Wordbird buffs have a chance to buy a rare plane. ADS-V will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-V today. 
with the Benelux King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. Okay, Warbird Buffs, here's your chance to score big. A 1939 Miles M14 Magister that was used to train RAF pilots throughout World War II is for sale. The plane is to be auctioned at Bonham's Bond Street sale on November 30th. With an estimated value of $93,000 up to $140,000. The M14 Magister was a two-seater training aircraft widely used by the RAF and Fleet Air Arm during World War II. A development of the civilian Hawk Major and Hawk Trainer, the airplane was an ideal introduction to high-performance flying for pilots moving on to the Spitfire and Hurricane fighters. According to the report, it's believed that this airplane was fully restored in the early 1990s. This Miles was a regular flyer and was used for many of the Strathallan Collection's air shows but it will require recommissioning before further use. The five Spanish-produced variations of the Messerschmitt ME-109s that were uncovered in a Texas barn earlier this year have been acquired by the Swiss company Bosham Global Limited, which plans to return the planes to flying condition. These aircraft were last flown in 1968 for the film The Battle of Britain, and have since been in storage in Texas. Although the ME-109 and its variants are the world's most manufactured fighter plane, today only a handful are still in existence worldwide. This lot includes the only surviving factory two-seater ME-109. After the film The Battle of Britain was completed in 1969, the owner of the planes, Connie Edwards, received the aircraft as payment for services he provided during the making of the film. Boston Global facilitates the sale of these rare aircraft to interested collectors and warbird pilots, and most of the aircraft have already been sold, according to the company. Here's an interesting example of a government catch-22. A state law in Georgia requires anyone working to design, build, or repair airplanes, helicopters, and other things that fly to be licensed by the state. However, it's reported that the state no longer administers the exams because the FAA oversees the operation of aircraft. If the law is enforced, it could lead to aerospace engineers in Georgia with no way to get a state license to do their jobs unless they take a general engineering exam that requires them to know about things like concrete and building ventilation. The fact is most Georgia aerospace companies simply ignore the law. Greg Kress, the co-owner of Top Flight Aerostructures in Dallas, Georgia, is reported to have said, quote, no one from the state ever knocks on our door saying, let me see your license, end quote. The quirk and the Georgia law came to light during a hearing held by a legislative committee looking at ways to bolster the aerospace industry in the state. Well, that's our program for Friday, November 21st. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition. And do be advised some great upgrades and changes are coming soon for Airborne, starting with a daily schedule Monday through Friday early next year and much, much more. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.